Hi everyone, in this video we're going to talk about Bernoulli differential equations and we're going to go through the steps required to solve one and then we're actually going to solve one. So this equation you see here on your screen is called Bernoulli's equation. So if n is equal to 0 or n is equal to 1, it ends up being a linear differential equation and we can solve it using the methods of solving linear differential equations. So if n is 0, you get y to the 0, which is 1, so it's linear. If n is 1, you end up with a y over here on the right-hand side. But you already have a y over here, so you end up subtracting the right-hand side, combining the y's, and it's linear. So if n is equal to 0 or n is equal to 1, the result is linear. So piece of cake, we can solve it. No big deal. If n is not equal to 0 and n is not equal to 1, you might say, whoa, how did I get here? Um, this is called the negation of this statement here. So the opposite of n equals 0 or n equals 1, or rather the negation of that statement is n not equal to 0 and n not equal to 1. It's, a, it's an important thing in mathematics. This is a p or q statement. And to negate that, you do not p and not q. Extra, extra info. <laughs> so if n is not 0 and, not, and n is not equal to 1, then follow these steps. I'm going to give you the steps. Then follow these steps. By the way, uh, this, this is said to be the standard form. Let's, let's call it that, so standard form. So we're going to assume that before we do anything, uh, it's in standard form. Okay, so step one, I won't, I won't put right in standard form, but make sure it's in standard form. So, so standard form is a priority, right? So step one, you let u be equal to y to the 1 minus n. Okay, what a weird substitution, right? This is totally worth memorizing. Keep in mind, n could be negative here. It's, it's okay, right? It's okay. Step two, you want to solve for y. So solve for y. Now, some people do these steps a little bit differently. Um, I like these steps. Uh, these are the ones that, that I use. It makes it easier. So solve for y. Step three. Step three. Compute dy dx. So compute dy dx. Um, it's not necessary to write this, but let me just explain. Um, this, this will make sense later when you, when you see a problem, is where du dx comes from. So a common mistake uh, that I've seen is that people, uh, they omit the du dx because they forget about it and, and then you can't finish the problem and then, and then that's really bad. <laughs> so four, uh, substitute. So you substitute everything into your, into your de, right? So uh, substitute. So you replace your, your u with, with this and you replace, um, well, you replace your y, right? You solve for y, so you replace all your y's with u's and you replace your dy dx with whatever you have here. Step five, uh, you finish, right? Step five is to finish. Um, it's going to be a linear differential equation. All right, let's do, a, let's do a problem right now so you see uh, how this works. Uh, Bernoulli's are some of the most interesting uh, differential equations there are. I mean, this is just so cool. So ex means example. So I have one here. Uh, I haven't done it, uh, but I think it might be pretty simple. Let's try it. So dy dx plus, and I have it written down as y over x. I'm going to write it like this, 1 over x times y. So uh, you can't see it, but I have it here on a piece of paper, and it's y over x. So I'm going to write it this way, and this is x squared, y squared. And the reason I wrote it this way is because now it fits the form. It fits the standard form of Bernoulli's equation. So dy dx uh, plus p of x, y, equals f of x, uh, uh, y to the n. So now you see it fits. It fits the form, right? You can see the p of x is, is 1 over x. All right, so let's work through this uh, solution. So step one, uh, I guess, is to find, well, put it in standard form. We did that. We found n, right? n is 2, right? That's how you know it's a Bernoulli, right? Like everything else looks good, and then you have like this funky y to a power, right? So that's how you know. So step one is to compute the um, the substitution, right? So u is equal to y to the 1 minus n. That's our beautiful substitution. So u is equal to y to the 1 minus 2. 
okay? So u is equal to y to the minus 1, okay? So that's step one, right? Uh, we, we've made our substitution, so step one. Step two, we're going to um, solve for y. So uh, we have u equals y to the negative 1. That's the same thing as u equals 1 over y. You can multiply by y, you get y u equals 1. And then divide by u. And then we can do this. u equals, y equals u to the negative 1. So we've solved for y. A lot of times you can do it in one step. I guess we could have done that here too. But like, I hate to derail, but like let's say we had like u equals y to the negative 3. Then we just raise both sides to the negative one-third power. I guess I could have done that here too, kind of, right? So, uh, so you get u to the negative one-third equals um, y. I could have raised both sides to the negative one. I could have done that. I could have done this. Look, hmm, hmm. And then you just get u to the negative one equals y, right? Much easier. I don't know why I didn't do that. Sorry. <laughs> too late. Um, all right, so we have y. Step three, I'm going to come down here because I'm running out of room, is to compute dy dx. All right, so we have y. y is uh, u to the negative 1. All right, so dy dx. Okay, now this is going to be key. So we know that u is equal to y to the negative 1, right? That's from right here. Okay, y is a function of x. u is equal to y to the negative 1. Therefore, u is also a function of x. Again, y is a function of x, u is equal to y to the negative 1 power, therefore u is also a function of x. So you want to think of this u as your inside function. So you bring down the negative 1, don't touch the inside, subtract 1, so you get negative 2, then you multiply by the derivative of the inside, du dx, right? That's the chain rule. That's why in the steps I wrote, this is where the du dx comes from, right? A lot of people have a very hard time understanding this step. Remember, it's just the chain rule, right? You're putting the negative 1 in the front, and then you're multiplying by the derivative of the inside, which is du dx. Okay, we have dy dx, right? We have, I'll write this again, we have y equals u to the negative 1. We have this. So now we're going to plug it into our differential equation. I'm going to rewrite the differential equation down here so we don't have to keep scrolling up. Our DE was dy dx, and you want to plug it into the one that's in standard form. Okay, so that was our original one in this case. So like if you have to do some simplification to get here, you know, you want to use this, this nicer form. Like if you had like x cubed dy dx, you'd want to divide by x cubed and then use the simplified form. Okay, let's plug everything in very, very carefully. So dy dx is going to be this here. So it's going to be negative u to the negative 2 du dx. Then we have plus 1 over x. y is u to the negative 1. So it's u to the negative 1 equals x squared. All right, so far so good. And then y squared, we're basically squaring this. So y squared is u, squaring this. So y squared is u to the negative 1 squared. So you just multiply the numbers, okay? So it's u to the negative 2. Okay, u to the negative 2. All right, now you want to uh, write this in the standard form for linear. So you want to get rid of the, this, this beast right here, this monstrosity. So you could divide by it, but that doesn't seem to work well for me. So what I do is I write down what we need to use to get rid of it. So we're going to multiply by. So we have to get rid of the negative, so we're going to use a negative. That'll make it positive. And then to get rid of the u to the negative 2, we're going to multiply by u to the 2. Because when you multiply these, you're going to add the exponents, and you'll get u to the 2 plus negative 2, which is u to the 0, which is 1. Right? That's how you figure it out. Okay, you have to ask yourself, what can you multiply to get rid of this? Right? So if it was like u to the negative 4 thirds, then you would multiply by u to the 4 thirds, right? Because that way um, they, they would cancel. All right, so let's do it now. So, so I like to write down what we're doing. Now actually do it. So it's going to be du dx. All right, let's see. So minus 1 over x. And let's see, u to the, to the 2 times u to the negative 1. So you add the exponents, so 2 minus 1. So we get u to the 1, super key, equals... If you don't get a 1 here, you did it wrong, right? It's got to be linear, so that's how you can check your work. This always has to be a 1 here. We have negative x squared, and that's it, right? Because 
these are just straight up going to cancel, right? U squared times u to the negative 2. You add those exponents, you get u to the 0, you get 1, it's gone. This bad boy is linear, right? So now we compute our integrating factor. So mu of x is equal to e to the integral of big P. So our big P is right there. There's the big P. It's negative 1 over x dx. This is going to be e. This integrates to negative ln, absolute value of x. You can bring the negative 1 upstairs. So it's e ln x to the negative 1. These cancel. You get absolute value, x to the negative 1, going kind of fast. You get absolute value, 1 over x. And that's equal to 1 over x if you assume x is positive. Um, you can do either or. If you assume x is negative, you get negative 1 over x, right? And it doesn't matter, right? You get the same answer at the end, so it does not matter. Let's reiterate that. So mu of x is equal to 1 over x. All right, so now we're going to multiply everything by, by mu of x. So it'll be 1 over x du dx minus 1 over x squared, right, u. And then multiplying this by 1 over x, it's just going to be negative x. And here's the trick. Uh, this is linear, right? So what, what's going to happen is um, this is always going to be, always, no matter what, your unknown function. In this case, it's u. I know before, when we were doing the linear DEs, it was y. But in this case, it's u times your integrating factor. And on the right-hand side, we have negative x. So let's check this. We can use the product rule, right? So the derivative of u is du dx. There it is times 1 over x, there it is, plus u, there it is, times the derivative of 1 over x, which is negative 1 over x squared, right? So it's the derivative of the first, which is du dx, times the second, plus the first, times the derivative of 1 over x, which is negative 1 over x squared. Now we integrate both sides. So integrate. When you integrate away the derivative, it goes away. So you just get u times 1 over x. Integrating the right-hand side, we get negative x squared over 2. Let's go ahead and add our big C. Now, y was equal to u to the negative 1. Or actually, I think, I, think, I think we know what u is. It's up here. Let me go up and look. It's up, up here. We made our substitution. Yeah, here it is. u is equal to y to the negative 1. So we have to make that substitution. So let's go back down. What a long problem. <laughs> so this is y to the negative 1 times 1 over x equals negative x squared over 2 plus c. And that's it. I mean, you could solve for y. Let's maybe multiply by x and rewrite this. So this is going to be, let's leave our final answer as 1 over y equals multiplying by x. It's going to give us negative x cubed over 2 plus cx. So that, my friends, is the final answer. So uh, the video is a little bit longer than I expected. If you've made it this long, uh, awesome. Great stuff. Uh, that's it.